The James Sunderland video is, of all my videos, the one I am most disappointed in. It's not my best work. And the reason why is clear. Two months before it was posted, I lost my father to lung cancer. It was the most difficult thing I've ever been through. The years have numbed the pain and I've grown and moved on. And I've found myself understanding James far more than perhaps the average gamer ever could. I think I was angry at James in that first video because he had killed Mary, who was dependent on him. I sat at someone's deathbed. I felt what he did, and I understand why he did it. A dying person just isn't who they used to be. Death changes you. It starts to take your mind, your ability to speak. I'm sure James felt his wife was already gone. But what he did turned her last moments into a terrifying, heartbreaking scene in which the person she loved and trusted most turned on her. That must have been so terrifying, so isolating. It was wrong. Depending on how you play Silent Hill 2, James is one of two things, a broken-hearted man trying to do his best in a bad situation, or a selfish man trying to escape his awful past. He is Schrodinger's protagonist. No other Silent Hill game changes a character's personality so much based on which ending you get. If you get leave or in water, James earns his redemption. He was just trying to help his wife. Any of the Maria endings, well, those don't paint him in the best light. Today, I'm going to go back over James's character in a little more detail. Yes, he can be a bad person, but it all depends on your choices. Your actions define who James is. James's name is an old one from ancient Hebrew, a form of Jacob which means supplanter, someone who usurps or takes something that doesn't belong to them. It's been the name of biblical figures and dozens of kings, who probably did do some supplanting at one time or another. His name is literally the name of a criminal, and that's our first sign that he's done something wrong. His appearance is as strange as he is. He wears the M1965 olive green Vietnam army jacket, which was given to soldiers serving early on in the war. It was a cold weather jacket meant for the harsh weather high up in the mountains. The jacket poses a few questions about James. For one, he's too young to have earned it. It has to have been his father's jacket, who we meet in Silent Hill 4. He's a very strange fellow, and possibly part of his problems might be PTSD from serving in the war. For another thing, the jacket is for cold weather. Look at the other characters in Silent Hill 2. Eddie wears shorts, Laura a skirt, and while Angela wears long sleeves, it's clearly because she's uncomfortable in anything else. But James is basically wearing a winter jacket along with two more layers underneath. He has to be burning up. There's no way it's actually cold enough to need those layers, but James has them on. Wearing layers can often mean a person feels vulnerable or uncomfortable in anything revealing, such as Angela. It might also refer to the many layers of James's psyche and his hidden memories. Something else we should look at are the badges on the jacket. Cloth badges like these might represent awards or honors given, or perhaps teams the owner served with. James's badges, besides the American flag, don't match up with any real-world badges. But there are some interesting correlations to be found. The yellow and red badge on his shoulder might relate to the Vietnam veteran ribbon given to soldiers. The colors for these ribbons were green, yellow, and red, just like the green jacket with the yellow and red badge. The East End badge probably refers to the world's most famous East End, the East End of London. What does a section of London have to do with James? Well, there was originally some inspiration drawn from the legend of Jack the Ripper for the story of Silent Hill 2. James himself was going to have a split personality named Joseph, which was the name of one man suspected of being the Ripper. And where did the Ripper kill his victims? In Whitechapel, which was near the east end of London. The last badge is much more vague. It simply says, Frontier. It could refer to the wild frontier, to the unknown, which James is certainly entering in Silent Hill.
James is clearly unwell in Silent Hill 2. I spoke some of the idea last time that he might have dissociative amnesia. He avoids eye contact and often withdraws into his own mind, not speaking to others. He says things that make no sense, takes actions that are disgusting or strange, and doesn't seem to be bothered by them. He's detached from reality, a defense mechanism meant to protect him from his memories of the murder. He is divided. The first we see of him is his reflection, not his real face. And the save points throughout the game are of his bloody face reflected in a red surface. The divisions represent his repressed memories and the pain of his loss. His name Sunderland comes from the Old English Sunder, which means separate or divided. He is a divided person. Interestingly enough, there's another character just like him whose name also means divided, and who the writers of Silent Hill 2 took a huge amount of inspiration from. Namely, the protagonist of the novel Crime and Punishment, a man named Raskolnikov. He too is a person who commits murder and suffers a mental breakdown because of it. And his name comes from Raskolnik, a Russian word that means a schism or divide. To learn more about Silent Hill 2 and the ties it has to Crime and Punishment, check out this video. In the last video, I briefly spoke about my theory that the two pyramid heads were related to Mary and Maria rather than Eddie. I can understand why the theory that the two murders inspired the two pyramid heads is popular, and I even agree with it. I just prefer my own interpretation. The story is so centered upon James and these women and how he treats them. His inaction and behavior leads to Maria's death multiple times. To me, it's not a far stretch to say that he harbors guilt over her death, just like he does Mary, enough to create another pyramid head. But Eddie was killed in self-defense. It's a very different scenario to Mary's premeditated murder, and I just can't imagine he has the same level of guilt. I also talked about the concept of the Byronic hero, named for the writer and man who embodied the character, Lord Byron. There's so much in popular culture we owe to this fascinating weirdo, and part of it is James's character. A Byronic hero is someone tormented, divided, whose actions inevitably lead to their own self-destruction. They're usually very depressive and traumatized by the past. They are often sinners in the sense that they may take action that others would see as immoral or even illegal, but which our hero would justify as permissible. Still, they suffer guilt, unable to completely ignore their actions. Both Raskolnikov from Crime and Punishment and James fit a lot of these descriptors. Silent Hill 2 is the story of abuse and how it changes people, how it can break them, make them violent, make them destructive. James and his wife show how abuse can destroy not just a person, but a bond, a love, deep and true, which becomes poisoned and malignant. Mary's suffering changes her into someone cruel and depressed. James withdraws into himself before finally lashing out, either to save his wife or himself. James is a fascinating and well-written character. Depending on how you play the game and how you interpret his actions, he can change drastically from a devoted and heartbroken husband to a self-serving, sex-addled murderer. He is the crux in what is arguably one of the best horror games ever made, which even decades later still stands the test of time.